Hey guys, Matt here, and today we're going to be talking about Call of Duty United Offensive for PC, an expansion to the first COD. And chances are, you probably never heard of this, and there's an even bigger chance you have even played it. So let's get into it. This is the first and last time Call of Duty has ever released an expansion pack to this caliber. I mean, you got not only 11 new multiplayer maps, but you also got 13 new single player missions, three new multiplayer modes, and the inclusion of vehicles like tanks and jeeps to the multiplayer. What? It was literally like getting a full-blown brand new Call of Duty game, but for cheaper, which is still insane to me. Now, since it was an expansion pack, it did require the original Call of Duty to play. And unfortunately, as a kid, I did not know that. I thought I bought a brand new Call of Duty game. So I didn't actually wind up playing this expansion till about three years after I bought it when I finally caved in and bought the original Call of Duty game. <laughs> and from what I remember, it was a pretty fun time. I, I can't remember any complaints, and that's why I wanted to revisit it. Was it really as good as I remember it? Well, let's see. The multiplayer portion added three new modes, one of which would later become a mainstay in the franchise, that being Domination. Which is kind of funny to think that one of the bigger game modes that people play nowadays was initially add-on content. Crazy. However, the mode was a little different back in the day compared to what it is now. Instead of three capture points, there were five to six points, and vehicles like tanks were usable to help in your goal. Other than that, we have the classic FPS game mode, Capture the Flag. Ah shit, wrong footage, cut that out. This had players split off into two teams, both fighting to capture the other's flag and bring it back to base. CTF was a classic mode that a lot of shooters had at the time, so it was a pretty smart move on Infinity Ward's part to include it in the expansion. The final mode added was Base Assault, which required teams to use heavy weaponry like artillery strikes and tanks to destroy the enemy's three bunkers. Once your team has absolutely demolished a bunker, you then need to sneak into the basement of said bunker, plant an explosive, and then try and go boom. This mode was incredible, and honestly, I think it should make a return in some form, though I can see how that may be difficult since the type of weaponry we use now in current CODs is more bombastic. But come on, I know you can figure something out, Infinity Ward. Bring it back. Now we've talked about the new modes, and I've mentioned the vehicles briefly, but wait, there's more! 11 new multiplayer maps, and this wasn't no season pass, they were all a part of one content drop. Now, I'm just gonna talk about my favorites real quick, cause frankly, there's so much to touch on. First up, Casino, which is more of a long range map with some close quarter combat that can take place around the cramped buildings. Casino has a large open mill area surrounded by destroyed buildings, which wasn't exactly my favorite for deathmatch, but I really enjoyed playing on it in other game modes. Another is Kursk, which is also a pretty big map that consists of mountainous terrain that takes place on farmland with a bunch of abandoned homes and a neat windmill. When I was doing research for this map, a lot of places were saying that it was a medium ranged map, which I don't know what the hell they were talking about. This thing's pretty big, at least compared to COD maps nowadays. This one, I would not exactly recommend playing Deathmatch on. However, a more objective based game mode definitely suits this map more. And finally, we have Sicily, a map that consists of mountainous terrain with village areas and a few pathways along the beach side. Near the beach side, you can find destroyed ruins, which is kind of interesting, and provides cover along the pathway. Just like with many of the other maps in the village area, you can go into the buildings. Knife from the windows, you know, all that good stuff. 
This map I just all around enjoyed. I thought it was good playing non-objective game modes and objective game modes. I really liked the look of everything. So I would definitely classify it as my favorite map from United Offensive. So that was a little glimpse into what United Offensive offered in maps. But even if none of my favorites interest you, there's still seven other maps. And thanks to a glorious mine community, dozens upon dozens of custom maps, meaning you'll definitely find something to latch on to. United Offensive also introduced a ranking system for the first time in COD multiplayer. That's right, COD didn't have a ranking system until this expansion, and it's far different from the current leveling system. As players' match scores increase, they gain ranks. Each rank unlocks you new perks and benefits. However, ranks are reset after every match and don't carry over. Honestly, I'm glad they changed it to what it is now, but I could see this being a mechanic in a classic game mode that they can implement into current COD games. And hell, they kind of have it in the new Modern Warfare 2 with how you obtain all your perks in a match. All in all, I loved revisiting this expansion's multiplayer. It was a fun, simplistic add-on that had a lot to offer in terms of content, especially for the time, and I definitely see this as being a gold standard for add-on PvP content in the early 2000s. But Matt, Rezo, baby, what about the single player? Was it just as enjoyable? The single player missions are centered around the three major allied forces of World War II. You got Corporal Scott Riley for the US, Sergeant James Doyle for the UK, and Private Yuri Petrenko, a soldier in the Soviet Union. And believe it or not, the expansion includes real historical battles, such as the Battle of the Bulge and the Invasion of Sicily. This is what I'm talking about. Man, I loved how COD used to have the player experience war through multiple perspectives. Unlike a certain World War II shooter, a standout mission for me was this on-rails mission set in a plane in which you man several machine guns in order to defend a Royal Air Force squadron attempting a first-time daylight cross-channel bombing run on a Nazi-controlled industrial complex. Now, obviously, COD would later introduce more on-rails missions or just on-rail segments in the campaign. But man, it was still cool to see where it all started. And they did a damn fine job on their first go of an on-rail section. I also thought the Battle of the Bulge mission was a solid start to the single player. I mean, the mission just grips you right away. You go in for a sweep, get spied by a bunch of Germans, get overrun and then have to run to a jeep where you're racing to get back to base. Then when you're back at base, you gotta hold off against the attacking German forces. It's really cool and really intense. We also get a nice sweet little addition of that classic smart mouth humor you typically find in in all the old World War II COD games. The sooner you men can scout that ridge over there, the sooner we can get back and get some hot chow. Hey, Sarge, can't we just skip the patrol and go straight to the hot chow? Ender, I'd find that funny if I wasn't freezing my can off. Now get out of here. Meet back at the Jeep when you've done your sweep. Now, United Offensive didn't just add one of the first on-rail missions to Call of Duty, but it also included the ability to deploy machine guns, use flamethrowers, to sprint, which did make your character run faster, but at the cost of not being able to fire your weapon, as we all know, and the ability to cook your grenades. All in all, this was a damn good expansion with a lot to offer and i am so happy that i took the time to replay it it's insane to think that this was what add-on content was like for cod back in the day i mean you could practically consider united offensive its own game but to answer the question i had at the start yes this was just as good as i remember hell it's better than what i remember it's fantastic and i highly recommend you play it as well. Despite all the praise though I'm giving this expansion, there are a few things that I need to mention about it. One being that the single player is one of the hardest veteran difficulty single players that you could play on. It is seriously 
really, really challenging. So just keep an eye out for that and maybe stick with hardened or just something a little bit easier. Another thing is due to Windows 10 and 11 having some weird update, you can't really play the disc versions of the games on Windows 10 or 11. For some reason, the multiplayer works perfectly fine, but the single player just crashes or doesn't open. There are workarounds, but it's probably best to just get it on Steam. But if you do get it on Steam, get Call of Duty War Chest. It just works perfectly fine. You don't really have to find a workaround to be able to play both the single player and the multiplayer. So just keep that in mind if you decide to try this out, which I once again highly recommend you do so. Hey, so that was the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, drop a like and uh, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell. I'm gonna be releasing two more videos before 2023. So I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.